His mama. Hallelujah. As we move on and we move on in good time, we're going to ask the curator to come now. Bill already did as I knew her. Bill did that part. All right? Bill was filling in. And so we're going to ask you to stand once again as we do the New Testament reading. Let us all stand as the curator come. Bastian, come now and give us the second reading. Let us stand for the word of God. Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. 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 This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The wife and I passed by Sister Lois after Jackie and the crew came down. And O'Kell's son came through the door. Pastor Jacqueline Gibson was sitting in the corner. And when he opened the door, he did a double take because he saw mommy, Sister Lois. She looked so much like her mom. Let us all stand and give Pastor Jacqueline Gibson and D. Shane Gibson a hand as they come and pay tribute. Come on, clip on, clap and tell the cup. Jackie grew up right here. Pastor Jackie grew up right here in the Church of God of Prophecy in Seattle.
Not one of Jackie's siblings or family members have ever shown any negative attitude towards me. And this is no exaggeration. They all treat me like blood. And not to underscore the great relationship I have with each of them, but everyone knows that Verna is my heartstring. <laughs> like most families, we celebrate Christmas together. And when my parents were alive, I would celebrate with my family and then fly over to Grand Bahama to celebrate with mom. Then after the passing of both of my parents in 2013, I told mom, and she readily agreed, that she would have to now take my parents' place. Just so you can understand and appreciate how close mom and I were, at 84, and the last birthday she had, she celebrated with us in October of last year, I got the first piece of cake. <laughs> Despite all of our kids being there, I got the first piece of cake. It is a defining moment, but defining moments like this, which reveals our inner strength. And death is something we know will happen at some point in our life. We do all we can to prepare ourselves for it, but when it finally comes, those we love and cherish, it is a very, very humbling experience beyond imagination. Ma was the type of mother-in-law that every man or woman should and would want to have. And it's because of how I refuse to entertain any negative jokes. Anytime people crack and jokes with mother-in-law, I don't get myself in that. I tell her. My mother-in-law was like that. In almost 34 years of knowing Ma, I've never seen her angry, I've never seen her row, I never heard her raise her voice before. Of course, she had me spoiled. She had me spoiled. But George, before she was basically confined to a wheelchair, she would cook and bake the most delicious meals. And I was always make sure, made sure that I was fed first. I could hear her saying, now, Jackie, <laughs> feed that man. Who takes you into food? And when she cooked for us in Nassau, she would first find out what I wanted to eat, and then ask what time I was coming home to make sure the food was finished just before I got home, because she knew I liked my food hot right off the stove. And so the menu would always be what I wanted to eat, not what they wanted to eat, it was what Shane wanted to eat. Of course, I had um, an opportunity to um, share some of my food with the then Prime Minister, who um, was the lover of soup. And um, I was cooking some soup one day and I say, um, Prime Minister, you gotta come and taste some of this. And I think if he had an opportunity to speak to you today, he would tell you how good that soup was. <laughs> I'm so blessed that to this day, to have witnessed all of those positive qualities in my display, such as she was a perfect wife. She was the most effective and adorable mother. She was a detailed homemaker, maker, a perfect mother-in-law, a consistent spiritual advisor. She was untrained, but she was an effective counselor. She was a consummate prayer warrior, a great cook, a loving grandmother, and a great grandmother who unfortunately never had an opportunity to see her only grandson because of the logistics and her living here and her grandson living and that's all. And I feel so good that all of those same qualities are displayed by my white jacket. We thank and salute the memories of the footprint she left behind. I would always look forward to flying to Freeport to spend time with her on special occasions, like Mother's Day birthday or Christmas, or sometimes just flying over impromptu and surprising her, and she would light up like a Christmas tree each time. I remember the last time I came over just to spend some time with her, on just a regular occasion, I met her buying some chair covers. 
from ladies selling these chair covers out of the barn. I said, Ma, you really need these, these hair covers. She just looked at me, these uh, chair covers, she just looked at me and smiled. I knew she didn't want them. She didn't need them. She was just trying to help out lady. And of course, when I told Jackie, um, in her presence, all she was, she just kept smiling like a little child who done something bad. <laughs> What was remarkable about her was she made you feel like the little things we did in life meant the world to her. I can remember vividly the cruise we took together as a family, and even though she spent lots of time in a wheelchair, she had herself a ball. I'm so glad that I got to spend the kind of time with her that I did. I'm so glad that she gave me such a wonderful and a caring wife. We should all be so proud of the lives she has shaped and the legacy she left behind. And so each of our kids, I want you to continue to just remember the good and the positive times you spent with mom. Finally, like a colleague once told me after the death of my parents, shame, grieving, is the price you pay for loving. And I say to you, the family members today, grieving is the price you pay for loving. May our soul rest in peace. My assignment is to lead my siblings and our children in honoring and saluting three generations of our parentage, our great-grandparents, our grandparents, and now with the death of mommy, our parents. This third line is closed. Three generations of people who have impacted us and our children in one way or another. Their DNA, their personalities, their physical features, their temperaments, all down the generational line has helped to shape us into the people that we are today. So with the passing of mummy, the last line just above us faded away. And we pause to salute them. Psalm 103, 15 and 16 says, As for man, his days are like grass. As the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. The wind passed over John J. Williams in 1953. Susan Williams in 1964. Mihaela Williams in 1968. Elrica Henfield in 1972. Anna Henfield in 1987. Jacob Williams in 1990. Leonard Henfield in 1991. O'Kell Williams Sr., our dad, in 1995. And on January 24th, our mom, Lois Williams, faded away in 2019. I'd like to invite our children to stand with us, please. As we salute. Our children are now seeing in us 
what we saw in our parents. Yeah, they're saying the limbs from our vivid joints. They're smelling the bengay on us now. <laughs> and the request for that hot cup of tea before bed. But while they're still looking at us, our children, let them see in open display the rich deposit mommy and daddy left in us. I know if anybody is going to heaven, it's Lloyds and O'Kell Williams and Jackie Gibson, of course. <laughs> so as we weep, we do so with a hope of a glad reunion day. There will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know. When we see the many loved ones we've known here below, gathered in the blessed hilltops, with hearts all a glow, God will be a glad reunion day. Can I invite the congregation to stand and join us in singing? Glad reunion day.
eyes have not seen, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that the Lord has prepared for us. Touch somebody and say, won't you go with me? Won't you go with me? Jackie said, mommy, you leave it up behind. Car number 2035 for black Nissan that is parked somewhere. You're blocking the way. We need you to remove your vehicle, please. <laughs> 